Hey, David Raffoff here with another Elixir video. Uh, today I'm going to be covering uh, kind of what's the standard um, static code analysis tool for Elixir, uh, which is Credo. And, um, you know, wanted to talk to you, I guess, briefly about like why you might want to use something like this. So uh, static code analysis is really good for helping kind of standardize uh, your code base and let you automatically um, set rules you want to conform to and make sure that they're being conformed to. Uh, so this is especially handy in like a team setting, but it's even still really useful um, if it's just, uh, you know, your own solo project that you're working on. Um, if you've ever used something like RuboCop before, this is like pretty uh, similar to that. Um, so essentially the way these work is you set, they have a long list of um, rules that you can configure, but they kind of come with some defaults. And then uh, you essentially run this tool against your code base and it's going to show you where uh, every place where you have a uh, violation and it'll break things up into like uh, actual like kind of errors and then warnings uh, and usually these tools are good too for um, helping you understand like how uh, like standard ways to use the um, language and uh, problems that you might be introducing that you don't realize you're introducing so I find these kind of tools really helpful, especially when you're um, learning a language to try to make sure you're kind of using it uh, to its fullest uh, potential. So yeah, uh, this is the uh, Credo uh, tool here. And um, you'll see here, it's just kind of showing some sample output. Um, you notice too, it's got on the right here, this section about um, using strict mode to enforce the style guide. Uh, so yeah, that's typically, um, I think, probably the most useful way to run it. Uh, you, you may not just want to necessarily always default to that because if you, say, for example, have a big existing Elixir app and you introduce this in the middle of it, there's probably going to be all kinds of violations in there. And if you start with the strict setting, uh, you might be like, for example, like uh, causing a build to fail or something like that. Um, uh, so anyway. Uh, the, the, that's kind of how you might use it. Um, the installation is pretty easy. It's kind of the normal Elixir thing. You just add uh, this dependency for Credo into your uh, dependencies inside your mix.exs file, and then just do a mix dependencies.git. Um, and you can run the vanilla command here with just mix Credo, and that'll um, you know give you output about any violations in your terminal. Um, a couple odd things I found though when I did that was I wasn't getting as many warning or I wasn't getting as many messages as if I used uh, strict. And then there's also um, by default it um, kind of caps how many results you'll get of a certain type. Uh, so there's an option to that you can give it to just actually show you everything. Um, so it's kind of useful to run it first maybe with. Um, having some a less verbose output just to get an idea for what kinds of problems you have. But when you actually get into trying to address them, you probably just want to use the flag for all. Um, and once you've cleaned up your project to match the, uh, the rules you've set, uh, from that point on, I would pretty much just run it with all because uh, that way you'll see anything um, that's a problem. So yeah, enough about um, what it is. Uh, the way I run it, it's it that's already installed in my project is I do uh, mix credo um, dash a and that's um, gonna give you everything or all and then dash dash trick and when we run that uh, I believe I've already fixed most of the problems in here but I it looks like I just introduced a couple of new things and one thing I really like about this is it um, categorizes your problem so um, uh, other tools I've used don't do this for you, at least not just on the command line. So here it's um, found a couple of violations for code readability. So you can see here it says, um, do not use parentheses when defining a function that has no arguments. Uh, so let's just take a look at what that is. So that's uh, chart months. We'll pull that code up. It's the top one. So here it's saying if you don't have any arguments, just don't include the parentheses. And this is going back to what I was saying about um, 
uh, learning like the idioms of the language that you're working in. Because there's usually two or three ways you can do a lot of things, but um, it's nice to uh, kind of follow whatever is idiomatic for the language that you're in. So, uh, although technically I can include parentheses here, um, sounds like the idiom, idiom is to not include them. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, one thing that's interesting too at that is uh, when you call a function with no arguments, it will call it if you don't include parens, but it's preferred to include parens. So like here, you can see, if I, if I was to take those off, it would give me a different error. Um, but yeah, I mean, these are all just the idioms of the language. So um, I'm gonna hop back over and run that again and see what we get. And there you can see uh, both of those uh, errors went away or warnings, I, I can't, I guess they were warnings, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty fast. So, I mean, there's really no reason to not uh, use something like this. And uh, especially in a team setting, like I said, these tools are really handy uh, just to make sure that, uh, you know, as you're working on something uh, that you're not introducing, um, anything that kind of falls outside of the uh, accepted style guide and uh, especially before you like open a pull request or something it's nice to um, address these kinds of issues automatically so that um, when you go to ask other people on your team to re review your code they can really focus on the decisions you made in the code or um, try just trying to understand the uh, problem you're trying to solve instead of going through and having to kind of like nitpick about uh, little things having to do with style. Um, so yeah, I mean, if the, uh, like personally, I, I would rather adhere to a style guide I don't really like than like not have a style guide because um, if everybody's automatically sticking to like a standard way of writing uh, the code, it just makes it easier to talk about the code with the rest of the team. Uh, but yeah, I think that's about it for um, Credo and static code analysis in Elixir. If you have any questions, uh, leave them below in the comments. If there are any other tools in particular you want to hear about, let me know. Um, I'm going to be kind of hitting all the standard Elixir tools you would probably want to use uh, for any kind of real app. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more of these. Uh, hit subscribe if you're interested in that and turn on notifications. And uh, if you like the video, just hit like. It helps me show up in YouTube and helps me know, uh, you know, what videos people are actually interested in uh, uh, seeing, and, and so I can know to do, you know, more similar ones. But yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.